Hello, spot the difference between these two cables. Uh, the first one's fairly obvious. Well, I'll tell you there are four differences. Length, quite obviously. Uh, this one is plug to socket and this one is plug to plug. Uh, this one has individual loose cables and this one, they're all zipped together. You can peel them apart, but they kind of come pre-zipped which is quite interesting. I did tear this one apart actually, because I kind of felt that yellow and black side by side was not as sensible as yellow and black sitting on top of each other. Anyway, whatever. Right, the fourth difference is a bit more tricky to spot, but did you spot it? I'll plug these two together and hopefully it will become apparent. It's that way around. Um, this one has black running to the connector latch and this one has yellow running to the connector latch. So these are actually wired one in reverse polarity. Now black to the connector latch is standard for the PCIe connector on ant miners. I don't know whether um, there's another use where yellow going to the latch side is standard, but certainly not on ant miners. And this caused a bit of a problem. So I'm making up uh, these cables XT60 to this PCIe uh, connector and some of them I'm making as an XT60 to two of these dual because there's a lot of these on an ant miner uh, lots of them on the hashing boards and one on the control board so I made this up plugged it into the controller board and yes it got the full reverse polarity 12 volts to the controller board the controller board did something interesting it didn't just blow up and go open circuit it fought the current and actually sunk masses and masses of current and you can see that it melted substantially. So the ant miner didn't power up and I thought, oh, what's happened there? And then smoke started pouring off this cable <laughs> and I thought, oops, something's not right. Now the thing is I've bought lots of these cables. I think there are 25 in here. Um, these cables which are reverse polarity from my point of view what I'm doing is I'm just cutting off the socket I don't know quite why you'd want a short extension lead like that there must be a use for it but yeah I'm cutting that off and putting an XT60 on um, I've got lots of these I've got lots of XT60s ready to make these up but now what I'm having to do is make this sort of thing so it's XT60 wired the correct way round uh, positive going to well positive on the PCIe which is black so I've had to put a red positive marker on that negative uh, going to yellow on the PCIe which is negative so I've had to put a black wrapper on the yellow and a red wrapper on the black it's a bit of a mess but um, of course this now works and my ant miners are fine but how much damage did I do to that controller board? So this is the Ant Miner control board, uh, L3 IO board, version 1.2. And it's a sort of base board with very little on it, actually. Uh, I've marked this with X's now because everything's faulty on here. Um, with this thing sitting on top of it. Now, this is actually a Beagle Bone Black. So what um, Bitmain originally did, I think, was just take a Beagle Bone, which is um, an SBC, a single board computer, with Ethernet and you know it has a TCP IP stack and internet connectivity and all that stuff. Lots of GPIO. So there are lots of connectors coming from these double row headers out to these connectors, which go to the four hashing boards. Um, 12 volts comes in here and goes out to these fan connectors. So interestingly, when I reverse polarited this, the fans also got reverse polarity, but they didn't seem to suffer and uh, more surprising still is that this beagle bone didn't suffer at all. It was absolutely fine after the reverse polarity event. So let's take that beagle bone off. Uh, it's quite tricky, but I can lever it off with pliers under here and just lever it off bit by bit. Just lever each corner off until the thing comes away okay so that's the beagle bone 
Now this particular BeagleBone uh, controller was faulty anyway. It came on a baseboard um, and just didn't work in the L3. So I went on eBay and bought a couple more control boards with uh, these uh, SBCs on them. This one I might have damaged actually. I've just been levering it off and I think I've moved a chip there. <laughs> I'll get in close on that. Uh, this one's faulty anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but I think I might have just munged up those or one of those chips there. They appear to be just drivers for the four LEDs, but yeah, got to be careful not to uh, actually disturb components. But as I say, this one's faulty. Now, I don't know whether this was sort of fried. Uh, possibly someone had tried to put different firmware on it and had just bricked it, basically uh, made it unable to accept new firmware. And so this is dead. Um, the baseboard, which I had marked dead, was probably OK. Well, it definitely was OK because it's now in the ant miner and working. But this one is dead and it's because the two butt converter chips got fried in the process of reverse polaritying this baseboard. So these are the two uh, butt converter chips that were on this board and they were there and there. And I cut the four legs and tried to lever these off, but it's broken the chip in half because these are ESOP. Um, I think they're called ESOP. And that means that they have um, a ground pad on the underside and it's soldered down onto the board. So you can't just snip the eight legs and expect the thing to come off and solder a new one on. You'd have to solder the eight legs and the ground pad underneath. And I don't really have the equipment for doing that kind of soldering. So as far as I'm concerned, these are dead. Let's have a look at what they are. So I think that's MP1484EN. And if you look up MP1484EN, well, let's do it. So this is the device MP1484. It is a 3 amp, 18 volt, 340 kilohertz synchronous rectified step down converter um, provides three amps of continuous load current over a wide operating voltage input 4.75 to 18 so that includes the 12 volts um, that the ant miner normally takes and one of them is set to 5 volts and the other is set to 3.3 volts on the output now it doesn't say what happens here if you reverse polarity it but I imagine then you're just simply putting current through the MOSFET's body diodes. And yeah, they held up quite well, long enough to melt that cable. But they didn't survive. And after I'd reverse polarited this board, um, there are two LEDs here. One 3.3 volts and one 5 volts. The 5 volts one was off completely and the 3.3 volt one was kind of just flickering intermittently. So I definitely killed this baseboard. I mean, yes, I could replace those components if I had the means to um, take off and replace ESOP components, but I don't think I do. And as I say, I've got replacements for this. Um, so actually it ended up not doing much damage. The BeagleBone black was fine. The fans survived. All really that got damaged were these two butt converter chips. So the fans are this sort of thing, uh, brushless fan, 2.7 amps, 12 volts. So they're quite powerful. They're fast. Uh, they're sort of five, six, seven thousand RPM. They're four wire. So you've got plus and minus 12 volts. You've got a PWM signal to set the speed of these things. And you've got a taco signal to feed back that the fan is actually running at the speed you've asked for and the, the fact that it's running at all because if you've got a, a heat critical application then you need to know that the fan is running and not blocked so the taco signal tells your microcontroller yes the fan is actually shifting air and while I was thinking oh I wonder if I've done damage to these fans by reverse polaritying them it didn't seem to mind the fans um, I bought this on AliExpress which is a little four wire fan tester it's got a little display there and some LEDs and it will show you RPM of the fan. Also temperature of two little um, thermistors that are on here. And so I thought this would be quite an interesting little uh, fan tester, but I'll come back to that in another video. But lesson learnt, uh, all PCIe 
cables are not made the same. Some of them have negative to the latching mechanism and some of them have positive to the latching mechanism. I mean, if you know why that's not a standard way round, why is positive sometimes on that side and negative sometimes on that side? Yeah, let me know in the comments below. I have no idea why they would change the polarity, but that caught me out, but didn't ultimately end up doing too much damage. So there you go. Cheerio.